The things that I do, if, if I do a face plate, let's say a, a flat plate, you'll see there, oh, there's a circle. And when I, out on the lathe, what I'm going to do first is cut all these, these lines in. It won't take long. And then the hard part is they do this with a burner and, to, and divide them into, well, in my instance here, is uh, five degree se segments all the way around. And they all go to the center. However, take a look at the front of that. If you want to pass around, tell me what's different or you can see it. Spiral. See, see, if you, see how, many, how many of you had geometry? And you know what a tangent line is. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that's kind of where, when I get done with what I'm doing today and some of the other things, what I want to do is to make something in the middle. you got to have something in there. And then put my, uh, just, I'm just showing you what I'm planning on doing. Put, and then start to draw tangent lines instead of to the middle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that's going to look like. It's going to be kind of interesting because if you do it, if you do the same thing over here from a different direction and draw a tangent line, it might be kind of it might be kind of interesting. So just just something to think about. Uh, if you're thinking about doing something, we like I, I said, my my interest in this started just uh, from meeting David Bittman at a uh, what they call it with a symposium and spent some time with him. And I was just fascinated by this cover, and I've saved it all these years, and tried to emulate uh, what he did. Unfortunately, he, he got cancer and he's no longer with us. But uh, uh, that's, where, that's where my interest in this started. And the other thing is, well, I can make these kinds of things after you get, get things cut, and you, you uh, don't have to do a lot of sanding. In fact, when I'm done out there, I'll show you. I don't, I don't sand them at all. I just use a little piece of steel wool, turn it on, it's done. Um, the other thing is you can use wood that's, I mean, right in here you see a lot of wood that's really got grain. It's beautiful. And those you can, you know, use those pieces, of chunk of red oak that you didn't want to mess with. Or you can use uh, basically uh, maple, I use a lot of that, without any figuring in it, just hard maple, and it turns nice. Uh, and you spend a little time painting, which I like to do, uh, and you get something that, that's different than what you normally see at a craft fair. I found, found out, and so. So Jim, yeah, um, don't make a liar out of me, but you're painting all of these. You're not using those paint pens. Yeah, well, a lot of guys. There's not a lot of people that do this, but some of the guys that do it use special pens. They cost seven or eight bucks a piece, and the color doesn't cover. I don't like it. So I use a small paintbrush, and I don't, I don't have, I'm not going to try to demo that to you, but just regular acrylic paint like you buy in, in an art, art store. And I've got a system where I, I go across and paint all the tops, flip it over, and paint all the bottoms and stuff. And, but I draw out my design. I know what the design is going to look like. I, at least I think it, I do uh, before I start. And, and if, you, if you look at you know, something like that, you really have to have and you have to decide whether or not you're going to put uh, four four pieces around the outside to go to to draw to, to uh, draw your lines to four of them, six of them. That it has to be a derivative of 360, 360 degrees in order to come out evenly. So, is there we'll anything work. unusual about the painting? Do you dilute the paint, or you just have to have a real fine brush? Or? I, I use a lot of people. There are people that do this use a, a, a paintbrush with uh, I call it a static brush like that. That is eighth inch, eighth inch or less, and these are real short bristles. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I use an artist brush like this. Okay. And it, it also is small. You know, I, I just and uh, it just for me it works better and, and it holds more paint. This every time you, you you have to dip it for every little digit on there, and that gets tiring. And so, and do you ever have to double paint the squares? Did the wood show through or anything? Or did you never. Have opaque enough? No undercoat first of anything? Oh yeah, I, I, uh, I spray it with, uh, with a lot. I use just lacquer. Yeah. Just so the paint's the over lacquer? Yeah. Paint's so over lacquer. You, you can paint it on bare wood. I do that sometimes, but it, I soaks don't in. like it that way. Yeah. And the paint soaks into the wood too much then? 
without the undercoat allowing? No, it, it uh, it's hard to do. It, it just doesn't cover as well. Or it raises the grain a little? Yeah, it can do that a little bit. But, uh, do you ever paint the wrong square? And if so, how do you get it off there? Just right away with a wet rag or something? Mostly, I've got, I probably shouldn't even show you this, I got fat right there. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Scrape it off quick. Yeah. Scrape it off before it sets. That's, I keep that in my pocket all the time. Q-tip dipped in water, maybe, or something. Okay. Yeah, it comes right off. Because I can see me painting the wrong square. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll do that all the time. Yeah. Especially if I'm watching TV. There's then. no guidelines. There's no guidelines on this. You're not painting some lines. Unless you're painting something like on the inside of that bowl. Uh -huh. that's, that's a whole different thing there. Beautiful. And that is why mine have only been random patterned. <laughs> it's like, I don't have to worry about it yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard for people to do that. So I, 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 we'll go through this, and I, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because of the process. It's pretty simple at all. And you, there's dark spots, light spots, and when I get done with this, you're not going to see any of that. Um, so you can, you can kind of use up some of your, your uh, scrap woods and that sort of thing. Um, what I what I did today is I just I just turned a little bowl, um, you know that's just a little quick piece that, that uh, I turned for this demo, and um, it, it's just it's just a piece of maple. But all what I want to do is just show you the the uh, parts the things that you have to do. To, uh, first of all, this height. Where is that? Well, that's a really a, kind of a high-tech implement. It's a pencil taped and, and what I, the high-tech part of it is I put a little groove in there so it wouldn't roll and uh, And make sure the tape didn't come down and stick on the wood and So the first thing you got to do is just make sure that that thing is, is gonna when I start drawing after after I turn it that thing will actually be on center and um, and I'm, I'm going to do this part, and then I'm going to turn. But I'll do this part first to show you how the how the whole system works. And it's pretty pretty complex, but see, let's see what we can do. And what I do is this is threaded on. And this that holds this in place. And this is 360 degrees, and every five degrees, then it's not hard to make up something like that. And then what I do with that is the is put a little pressure on it, and what and I'm going to actually show you. This is part of the the last step I'm going to do. Is I is uh, I don't know. Yeah, this this. Uh, but I keep pressure on this, and I move this every five degrees. And I'll, I'll do this after I cut the grooves. Start out with in. pencil lining up with one. No, no. I'm just showing you this first because I, I had to. I did center the pencil. So this pencil dot is equal to the to the pointer in the middle of of, of the dead center or the tailstock center. So that, so that this is right, so I know that, especially when I go down inside, I know that this pencil line is not going to overlap another one. So, uh, and that's all there is to this complex part of it. You touch the pencil it. point to the big disc on your, on your lines and then hit the object? No, I, what, I, what, what I'm doing, and I'll get a... You get, have a pointer on there? I've got a pointer right here, and the pointer has two purposes. One, it keeps you five degrees apart because it hits there. Uh, and the pointer is not the pointer doesn't have to anything to do with the pencil really it just holds okay. this still and so with the pointer here i draw a line and then i turn this and there's pressure on here i turn it five degrees and i draw another line and i turn it five degrees and on and on, and on the same way and i'm not going to go through that uh so whole that process little stick that's clamped on there that that's lining up with those black that's, marks on the That's the, the little stick is the pointer that lines up with this. Black marks? Yeah. And this is all I've ever used through all the pictures you saw of all the things I've done. This is this has worked really well for me, quite frankly. And sometimes you have to, and I'm, I'm going to take this out of here right now. i got to take it off because i got to turn this. And sometimes you have to, depending if you have a really large piece, you need a, a larger piece here. You may have to cut it to fit around something. And it's not hard, not too hard to do. This is a five eighths dowel, and glued in. And right now, what I'm going to do is take take this off, and I'll show you the process of actually cutting the grooves. And 
I know. What do you think the, the size of this is, Steve? One by the, eight. This is one and one by eight. Eight threads per inch. One. Yeah, it's that's one inch though. It's one. Yeah. And my bigger bigger lathe, I got a, a second set. That, that's, uh, one thing you have to do when you cut grooves, you got to follow the contour of the workpiece, and you hold the cutter this way with the cutter cutting side down. And you want to be fairly close. It's it's always best. We want to be fairly close to center. If you don't, then it changes the size of the oval. When I first started doing this, I used to, I used to worry about the the uh, red the uh, circle or the ridges that I'm cutting being perfect and all that sort of thing. And I don't do that. The sides of this are so thin that it really tends to keep it pretty pretty accurately. Uh, after saying that, I just got off a little bit. Sometimes I'll show you how to fix that. On a small piece like this, you really, it, it, you really don't get a lot of dust and that sort of thing. Some of that, the things I showed you in a notebook were over 20 inches, around 20 inches. That gets a little more exciting. That keeps the speed down a little bit on a bigger piece. It's one long seam right here. I've got a little, whoops, a little bit of, of uh, stuff sticking here. And you, you got a three point to use quite a bit. It's a good cleanup tool for this. Somewhere I had a piece of uh, I had some steel wool somewhere. I don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, it's in the top. Anyways, at this point, I, I would use the steel wool if I had some, and uh, must have misplaced it. I'm not going to, at this point, you, you kind of get the picture, and, and what what I usually do at home on my lathe is I've got a remote uh, on-off button, is I go over on that side and do this, and I don't, I don't want to do that. You use that same straight tool on the interior? Oh, yeah. You don't have to have a bent one? Or... No, no, not at all. Oh, there's some steel wool. This isn't the same piece, you know. No, it's not yet. <laughs> I think it might work, though. Yeah, I, the, the inside, if, if you wouldn't want to have anything much more much narrower than this, it can be a little contentious down in there. But really, it, it isn't hard at all. I don't think it's really much on hard, harder than the, the outside. So, at this point, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to waste your time with uh, drawing the whole mess in. You'll get the what idea. What about the, you burn those lines with something? Or you... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. First, I'm going to draw them. Um, I mean, the one you just cut, you burn those two? Oh, no. You, you know, some some people do. I I, I don't do that. It, it, and they don't, what they do is they don't burn them. Some people will take I don't. I like these being close together. It, I tell you, if you if you get like when I first started this, I had tools that kind of left a little bit in between, and it just it looked to me it looked sloppy. I didn't like the looks of it. There's some guys that take like a, an old handsaw blade and grind it almost to a perfect V, sharpen it, and hold it in there and burn them in that way. I don't. I don't like doing that. Real fine piece of wire. Yeah, or wire. I, I've got. In fact, that's where I started. Is uh, I, I've got a piece of wire with the, with the wood on the end. I, I just didn't like messing with it. I, I just it was hard to control that. I, I just I just didn't feel I needed it. On the interior, if you're burned, you could use like a piece of formica or something. You could, but there again, I, if you look if you look at this easy, you see those. I, I just don't think you need it for your eye. That's you know, and that's that's just personal preference with me. If somebody wanted to do that, you certainly could. And, and uh, what, well, to me, it was just a step that you really didn't need to take. Because I think I think your eye puts those there, anyways. Okay, I'm going to go back once again, and I want to level. I got to re-level. Make sure my pencil is on the. On the center, which it is, and I guess that's tight. I'm 
have to turn this a little bit. This piece that I've got on there is it's like a almost like a popsicle stick. It's a piece of of maple and it's down to a fairly sharp point. And tongue and, depressor from the doctor. Tongue depressor, yeah. And uh, it's not on the same plane as the as the pencil is. It doesn't need to be. Uh, I hope that will hope that'll work. And I just put a little bit of, of pressure on it here, one at a time. He's got it sharpened to a point here. Yeah, it's down. It's down to a sharp point. Pencil line. Yeah. Just a And it's in my way a little bit here. There we go. I'm gonna move it out. Yeah, but I don't think it has that Yeah, your index on your lathe, you'll, you'll get lines that wide. They, they do make a, a, a kits for doing this. And like I say, if you want to go that route, I guess they work pretty good. Lawrence uh, Howard, when he was with the group, made one. And he was a machinist. And he had a thing that would they had holes here would would stop it and so at this point all i've got to do is and i don't have quite enough pressure on that there we go that's that's my fine tuning adjustment there and usually i'm just sitting on my rear end in a chair doing this and you have to stop and sharpen that pencil to keep crisp little narrow lines or pretty well hold up for the whole it holds up pretty good use hard lead or don't do it what you pencil, <laughs> these are ticonderoga yeah. they're the best pencil you can buy and i know that because when my granddaughter was in kindergarten her teacher told her that and don't ever use another kind and she won't <laughs> use another pencil <laughs> and i didn't believe her at first but she was right the uh the wood in a pencil comes from the hill country of texas it's that juniper that grows out there, huh. that pencil cedar they call it. And they take it out by the truckloads. Okay. And they squeeze cedar oil out of it, a cleaning product. And then they, that's from all the off coasts. And so there must be some truth to what she was saying because when you buy a packet, I buy two packets at a time at Ticonderoga, it costs me five bucks. You can go to Walmart and buy two packets and it costs you half a dollar or something. And, but they're no good. These, these these last forever. And I am vouch for that. I've only done a couple of these. And I started with pencils. And I'd take two lines and resharpen. Two lines and resharpen. And then I thought to myself, back in my drawing days, I'm like, you know what? These are all just cheap pencils. Get the Ticonderoga. And I never, I, I could get the whole piece. And it was amazing. The lead's just amazing. Sometimes you sharpen them or lift them up. And it's like, well, the lead fell out again. They're just junk. I use some pencils that when I go to mark the wood and the wood's turning, it actually melts the lead. It's not really <laughs> no. graphite type stuff. It's some sort of plastic top and it just melts. Sometimes, like I said, that was 11 years ago. I listened to a kindergartner and she was smarter than me. <laughs> they don't start them with those fat little pencils on them? No, no, they don't. That, that's embarrassing. Are you kidding? What are you talking about? <laughs> they say those for me. <laughs> Okay, that and, then, and the crayon. I can finish that at will. I'm not going to bore you to death with drawing lines on there. I, I will show you my wood burner. Uh, wood burner is easy getting. This is the third one I bought. The first two I bought lasted about six months, and they blew up into pieces. I bought this. So this one's 24, 25 years old. I've got I've got kits probably on 150 kits. What's the brand? Nickel Nichrome. Nickel Nichrome. And uh, you, can, you can buy these pre-made. They cost you five, ten bucks. And I, I go through a lot of them. And the only thing I would tell you is if you want to, want to make a tip like this, don't try and bend it and make the tip. What you have to do is, is get a piece of, of steel. I have an anvil. Uh, or and beat it, beat it to death until it's really flat, and then take a small round burr and cut that into and cut a shape in there. And I don't know if it'll show or not. Probably not. No. Uh, 
Yeah, probably not. Um, turn, it, turn it to a few degrees. There you go. With my finger behind it, or yeah, yeah, that's good. And and you make it fit over 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 the coal that you cut or the uh, bead that you cut on there, and make sure that's all flat because if you leave a crease when you bend it, you leave a crease and you start using this, it'll just come apart. And, that, and, and there's a, hundreds of shapes that you can make, most, most of which you can buy, you can make your own. Uh, this, this probably cost me a half a penny to make. Uh, so. You used to be able to buy nickel chromium wire at the hardware store, but that was years ago. Was yeah, 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 and now you can send away for it. It's, it's a little more money, Trevor. It's not a lot, it's not a lot more money. The toaster wire. Yeah, so. Is it the same as piano wire back then? No, I don't believe it. What's in the toaster? Toaster, toaster wire, toaster wire. Not, yeah, it's just nichrome. You you can buy it online. It's cheap. You can buy you can buy enough to make you know a thousand of these for five, five bucks. And, and the thing I the thing I like the selling point to try this is is you can you can go out and you, and you turn in the shop and and, uh, and I can do different kinds of turnings. I'm on, on I got a couple of these. But when I, in the evening I go in and my wife wants to watch TV in the evening, I can sit there in my chair and just do this and. and uh, it doesn't fill the room with smoke. Slowly. Oh no, 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 no. Well, it, you know, you're in charge of that too. I could turn that up and set. I could turn this up and turn this, set this on fire if I wanted to. This will turn red hot. And you don't want to do that. Do you burn them on the lathe in the chuck, or do you no, no. I, when I'm done with this, I do the do the outside, the inside, uh, and I'll, I'll reverse turn it, cut the, you know. So it's, and you and you can't. You set it on there and you and you just turn it. I, I just set it in, turn it, set it, turn it. And it goes pretty fast, really. Is that the camera? It shows how it follows the grooves. Oh, great. Yeah. How'd you weld that on there? No, no, you buy them, just like that. Oh, fine. Yeah, the different sizes, the different, each, each size will fit your different tool. The company, Burnmaster, makes, yeah, makes tips, okay. like I say. But, but there again, being frugal and, and, and knowing what, exactly what I need, uh, I even, I even, if you look at this, I don't know if you can tell, it's bent. I bent that on purpose because when, I, when it's in my hand and it goes like that, it goes straight, you know. And so I can, I can adjust this, do anything I want. And like I say, I got a penny into that probably. And to, and if this thing burn, they burn, they usually break in the edges right here. And ten minutes later, I got a brand new one, you know. So that's what I do. You try rebending it after you've used it. A while does that uh, steel take on a memory or it'll snap? You, well, what you see how that is? I bend that to fit me so that when I turn, uh, you know, it, it, it follows my hand. I usually have it in my hand like that. Okay. And I never change it. Never change that. Yeah, you, you could. This this is this is pliable. I could I could. Is this pliable? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You can change that if you want. Yeah. Some people some people like to do it straight like this. They they go straight on. I, I get tired doing that. What's that? Nice bent for the inside. Oh yeah, yeah. I've got different. I've, I use one that's a lot straighter on the inside, much straighter, and uh, it just makes it easier. But, so that's about as small a hole as you'd want to work through. Yeah, and yeah. And and you, I've done, I've done turnings, and I don't think I'll give you any pictures. They're a little bit bigger than this, where the outside and the inside are turned and burned. And then, then it's got a small opening, and then obviously you have to turn that two pieces and conceal it. Uh, and yeah, and but you use you use a straighter straighter uh, tool. But, yeah, if you, if you really want to turn the inside, and some people like that because they look down in there and see that. You, <laughs> well, somebody wants that, but you're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pay for a little bit more money for that. So that's all. Got a few questions? Uh, if you want to take pictures of that. Anything in my book there? That you like uh, wood, soft maple for the or cherry or I like hard maple. Cherry, cherry is darker. I, I my wood of choice is, is uh, hard maple. Yeah, that's 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 red oak. <laughs> it only only if you like pain. Go ahead. <laughs> but uh, yeah. isn't that what David had to turn? Oak oak. A lot of oak. No, well, I, I think beech would be good. I, I really do. But I've never, I've never tried it with this. I turned it a little beech. bit. I, yeah, I think it would be uh, beech. Beech has a high propensity for splitting. Yeah, I know. I know that. Yeah.
Thank you, Jim. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad to share what I like to do, and I know everybody's a little bit different and like to do things. But uh, if you if you're in this to to make a few bucks and sell things that you don't have a lot of invested in your this stuff, uh, I found it draws people's attention right away. They want to go look, see what is it. Both I, of those pieces you have up there, the the squares that are not painted are the color of the wood. Yeah. Do you do pieces where every square is painted so it doesn't yes. matter? Yep. Or you dye them sometimes so everything's red inside or whatever? Yeah, I, 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 I do that quite often. I, dyes I stay away from because it bleeds through the acrylics. I don't I don't use dyes. What I do is, is I'll take that, like this one here, I'll take that basic red and thin it right down and just brush it in there. And uh, it's real thin and, and, and it won't conceal the, the uh, burns that you had. It gives you a background. Are those transparent paints that you're using, or what? They're just standard acrylic, uh, artist grade. You know, don't, don't get yeah. cheap junk, but uh, yeah. artist grade and acrylic. Yep. Yeah, I, I usually got a small gob of paint, a little bit of water, and uh, setting it on setting it on a uh, oh maybe a paper plate or something, and that's how I paint. It's all done in the evening. So. Beautiful job. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I I do it because it's fun.